and welcome to my sew along of the Astaire by French Navy Patterns. So first of all I'm going to run you through the different pattern pieces that you will need. Now I am making the short sleeve version which means it has a turn up cuff and um, short sleeves. There is an option also for a long sleeve but I'm doing the short sleeve in this video. So let's go through the pattern pieces that you'll need. So I've got them in a pile here. So the first one, I must apologise in advance for any rustling. <laughs> I've still got some pattern pieces here, but I thought it might be useful for you to see them. So apologies for any paper rustling. <laughs> so the first piece I've got is the neck band reinforcement. That is piece four, and you cut one of those. So I've got one of those ready. Um, I've also cut out my neck band, which I've actually cut out on the fold, but the pattern piece comes as one long piece. So I've cut my, I just folded the pattern piece in half and cut mine on the fold just because I thought it was easier to cut it like that. The next piece I've got are the sleeve cuffs. There they are, cut out two of those and also mark the notches. And then this is the front pattern piece and I've actually shortened mine by two inches on the bodice. So that's that piece here. Ta -da! And then the last piece I've got is the back piece. And I've taken two inches out of that as well to match the front. So that's that piece for being and cut out as well. There is an option to put a pocket on the Aster Air T. I've decided not to put a pocket on mine, but if you are doing that, this is the pocket piece you'll need. So yeah, there you go, there's pattern pieces. And then we'll move on to the next part of, the, which is the first steps of sewing up the Aster T. Right, so the first part of the instructions is to overlock the bottom edges of the front and the back pieces. So I'm going to overlock down this front and then the back hem edge. So I will do that now. So there you go, they are overlocked. And now the next step is to fold up the hem to the mark the notches that are marked here. I don't know if you can see that notch there. And then we're going to press it along there. So I will take you over to my ironing board next. Right, so we're just doing this step here of the instructions. So I've overlocked the bottom edges of my front and my back piece. And now I'm going to press it up using the notch as a guide. So there's a notch there. Oh, I don't know if that's showing up very clearly. There you go. And then I'm going to fold that up and then we pin it and then we are going to stitch down here with a, let me double check, quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to press that up now. Oh, I should have mentioned it is wrong side, uh, right sides facing when we press this up. So just mark, line up those notches. And there are notch, actually notches where you fold and where the hem needs to line up to on the pattern pieces. Okay, let's try and get that to lay a bit flat. Oh. This seems so much more complicated when you're trying to video yourself doing it. <laughs> this is my first sew along and me oh my, it takes quite a bit of organisation. Hats off to Michelle from Sewing Bunny who does one of these every month. My goodness me, I'm very impressed. I was impressed anyway, but now I'm even more impressed when I'm on the other end of it. <laughs> right, so i'm just going to quickly measure that just check i've got that all even all the way along I'm going to use my seam gauge so let's just measure that that is right it's about six and a half centimeters there and it's not quite the same there maybe my cutting out wasn't very even what is it there it's six there so i think maybe that wasn't quite right yeah that's better six centimetres, six centimetres, 
bit of something is right. I'm going to actually clip that at the sides. I quite like using clips instead of pins when I'm using doing jersey patterns. Do that. I'm going to repeat the same for the back piece, but I won't show you that. But I'm going to do exactly the same. So folding right sides together, following the notches on the sides, I'll clip them and then I'll take you to the sewing machine and show you, show you me, show you <laughs> me sewing up the quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch seam allowance up the side. Right, now we can actually get on with some sewing. So I've come to the machine and I'm going to sew that quarter of an inch seam allowance down the sides of these two pieces that I have clipped and pressed. Um, I just thought I'd run you through the thread that I'm using. So I'm actually using a Maraflex thread by Gutterman. And I've got that in the bobbin at the bottom and I've got it in the reel at the top. And I'm using a 70 jersey needle. So right, let's sew that bit. I'll just put you down a bit so you can see. And move you in. Sorry, it's dodgy camera work. But here we go. I'm using a stitch length one, a stitch, sorry, number one. And the length is 2.5, just in case anybody wants to know. I'm going to repeat this for the back piece and then I will take you on to the next step. Right, so now we're on to the next step, which is we need to join the shoulder seams for, with the front and the back piece. So putting our right sides together, which I've got down here, I've just realised that my board is a ridiculously similar colour to the top, so I'm really sorry if this is not very helpful. So I'm going to match up the front and the backs at the shoulder seam. And then I'm going to clip them together. Where did I leave my clips? This is very professional, isn't it? <laughs> right, so yeah, I'm going to match up at the shoulder seams, the front and the back pieces. So let's get those clipped together. And then we can take them over to the overlocker and sew them. And they get sewn together. I think it's with a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me just check that. Uh, yeah, quarter inch seam allowance. So I just clip the other side. I don't know if you can see what I do. Yeah, I think I can. Right, so I clip to the this side. It does say in the pattern that you can reinforce the shoulders with a um, What's it called? A bit of a fusible knit interfacing. I'm afraid I'm being lazy and I'm not doing it. Apologies if that offends anybody, but I'm not going to do it. I may later regret it, but I'm not going to. So I'm now going to go along to the overlocker and I'm going to sew both of these shoulder seams with a quarter inch seam allowance on the overlocker. Right, so I'm at my overlocker now. Hello. <laughs> and we are going to sew together these shoulder seams. So I'm just going to use the edge of the blade as my guide for the quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm not going to trim anything off on this one, as I sew. I hope you can see. There we go, that might be slightly better. And I'll remove the clips as I go. Put this one in first. Lift up that foot. Get my pedal where I can actually press it. But I just also add that I have actually threaded my overlocker, I don't know if you can see, let's tip it this way, mm, with some pink threads, some moon threads, a white one on the lower looper, and on the upper looper I've got a pink Gutterman thread that matches. I um, just thought that might be handy for anybody that knows, so anybody that wondered. So yeah, you can see it's nice and pink on that side, there is actually white on that side, but it looks pretty nice I think. So yeah, that's one of them done, let's go on and do the other side. I 
I didn't trim off anything as I was saying that so I've just got the quarter of an inch seam allowance there and that's those shoulder seams sewn up right on to the next step right I am going to do the next step of the process which is we need to sew the neckband um, piece together at the short ends with a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to do this on my sewing machine and then I will take it up to the ironing board and press it open and I will press those sleeves that I've just sewn at the same time just to save me going to the iron twice. So off we go. Right, that's them sewn together and I'm going to open that out and press it open at the ironing board. Right, I'm back at the ironing board now. So now I'm going to press open that seam that I've just sewn and I'm also going to press open the shoulder seams as well. And then whilst I'm here with the neck band piece, I don't know if you can see, let's move it in a bit closer. So I'm going to fold the neck band in half and I'm going to press it. So let's do that one all folded, just get it in half neatly so those raw edges match up. Oh, this jersey is a little bit curly, doesn't want to behave quite as nicely as some jerseys, so I'm going to press a bit at a time. On. No, it's not. Oh, this is going so well. Let's get the iron plugged in. I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that quite likes to turn the iron off when I've left it, just in case I've left it on. I don't want to leave it on all night. <laughs> Me and my friend Alex had a discussion about that once. <laughs> How terrified we can be leaving the iron on. And I think Alex Besser did have a bit of a moment leaving her iron on once. <laughs> she was worried <laughs> about how long she'd left it on for. Right, here we go. So pressing all the way around that neck band, joining up those raw edges so that our neck band is in half. Sorry, this is taking a little bit longer than I thought, so I might just whiz it up here. We have a nicely pressed neck band. Right, and I'll just sort out the press open, the sleeves, the shoulder seam, sorry, on the front and back bodice. I'm going to press them towards the back. Do them for the wrong side, and then I'll do them from the right side as well does say in the pattern that you have the option of top stitching these um, seam allowances down but I'm not going to do that. There we go. We're on to the next step of the top. So what we need to do to the neck band which is what you do with most of these jersey tops is we're going to quarter up the neck band. So I will do that now and then we're also going to find the quarter points on the neck. So I'm going to, I've already got the centre front and centre back notches marked and then I will pull these to put those together and then find these quarter points. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So oh yes I have got them marked. So what we're going to do we've got the notches here and we're going to put those fold put fold those at those notches for the centre front and the centre back. Fold on done this the wrong way around going mad silly me it's the other way around what we do is we put the notches for the center front and the center back together like so then we're going to go all the way out make sure that feels nice and smooth together and then wherever that fold ends up there is where we're going to put our notch so i'm just gonna get my scissors and put a little snip in there because we've got quite a small seam allowance and then i'm going to do the same on the other side so put together the front and the back notches and then we're going to wriggle the fabric, get it all nice and smooth and then wherever that fold happens, I'm going to put a little notch in there. There we go. Right, so now I've marked my quarters. I'm going to do the same with the neck band. 
So I've got, this is one point here where we've got the center back where I have the seam allowance. Fold that in half wherever that bit folds. Some other bit, I've actually got a notch there already. Then I go to match up the seam allowance and that notch. And then at either end is where I'm going to put my other notches for the quarter points. To match up these marks on the neck band and my top piece, like in the instructions. And then we're going to, I'm going to pin them all the way around and distributing the um, excess fabric of this to the neck band. I'll show you how to do that. Right, so now we are going to um, join up the neck band to the neck opening on the top. I'm going to do it right sides together. So let me get this out. Hopefully you can see this. I'm hoping the angle is good. So let me move my machine back out of the way a bit. So here we go, here's our neck opening. We've got our quarter points marked there and there, and then we've got the centre front and the centre back. So what I'm doing, I'm going to get the neck band. I'm worried my neck band might be a bit big because my fabric is quite drapey. I'm going to match up the centre back with the notch here with the centre point on the, um, what's it called? <laughs> going mad on the neck band on the top right i'm going to use i've got some ballpoint pins and i'm actually going to use the ballpoint pins here to join this up because i'm going to baste it first on the sewing machine check i'm happy with it so that's one more point mark there then i'm going to find the next notch on here and mark, mark, match it up with the notch here on the top so quarter point notch on the neck band quarter point notch on the top and pin those together Apologies if this is a bit like um, teaching you to suck eggs because I'm trying to go through step by step but if you are new to showing sewing neckbands this might be useful. Then do the same again and making sure that you're keeping this flat. Don't get it twisted. Don't get a twist in here. That would not work. Keep that raw edge together. So raw edges again. I've got my notch here. I'm going to match it up with those centre front notches that I made on the neckband. In that there and the last notch oh sorry about that that was me knocking my clips next to my elbow last notch there right and now what we have to do is we have to just ease in these points so what i like to do is find roughly a middle point and pin that and then find another middle point between those pins and pin that i'll do the same with that one I'm not having to gather this very much. So I'm wondering if this neckband actually might be a little bit too long, but we will see. I'm going to baste it in first and see if I'm happy with it. Right, so that's that one there, pinned roughly in the middle. Pin this one roughly in the middle. It's worth taking your time with this because the neckband is the obvious part when you're wearing a top people look at your lovely face and then they look at the top of whatever you're wearing and your neckband is obviously near the, near your lovely face so right do that again so I sort of pull I didn't show you that very well so I sort of pull the neckband until the top is sort of level and flat with it if you can see when it's like that you've got a big gap give it a bit of a pull the neckband and it sort of lines up with the top there pinch it where it was just get those raw edges lined up because mine sort of shifted around a bit there oh it is a curly jersey oh not loving this good job i don't need to go back to san francisco to get more <laughs> <laughs> this is the fabric i got in san francisco on our honeymoon and that was 10 years ago almost to the day we it was our 10 year wedding anniversary this week can't believe we've been married 10 years where does time go hey life is an adventure and I'm very lucky to be on mine with my wonderful wife Kirsty right let's put that in there oh excuse the iron beeping in the background that's quite annoying isn't it <laughs> we'll just ignore that for a minute right so again now I found that 
middle point between the first two quarter pins, do the same again, sort of pull until that top is looking nice and flat and smooth against the neckband. Squeeze it where you've got it and then pin, put a pin in. Right, I'm going to do the same for the last section. So two quarter sections again, pull until that neck band is looking nice and smooth against the top. Pinch, pinch in there. Put the pin in. And then I'm going to do the same in between that point and that point. There we go. And then that point and that point. Now, which way is that should be facing? That's going that way, isn't it? Make sure that seam allowance is going towards the back. Right, now we get to take it to the machine. I'm going to sew it in. So let me bring you a bit closer so you can see what you're doing. Let me check, you can see. Yeah, right, there's the sewing machine. That would be helpful. Let's bring it a bit closer. So we are going to sew this at a quarter inch seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is put my top inside the machine can you see that there you can really see what's going on just to be a helpful sew along there we go right so what we're going to do I'm going to put the edge of my foot down there now we've only got a quarter of an inch seam allowance here and i know for i think that this is almost a centimeter you can see my centimetre line just there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the width on my machine right over and I'm going to get it to go in. Think about there, but let me just get a seam gauge. Where's my quarter, quarter inch mark? There. Oh, that's right there. I'm actually going to move it even further over because what I want to do... Oh, it won't let me go any further. That's as far as it will go. Okay, that's just under a quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste this in with quite a long length. I'll go for a four and a half. Baste it in, pulling between the pins if it's feeling like they're not laying flat and smooth together. And then afterwards I'll check it and see if it lies nice and flat. And if it does, I will then overlock it. So yeah, let's go through that now. Needle down, let's go. Right, that is the neck band in. Oh no, did we get a little pucker there? Oh no, we didn't. That was lucky. Right, neck band in. Oh, <laughs> with a hole. This is why we based it. Whoops. <laughs> I'll go back and just baste that back together. But I think that looks like that'll lay pretty flat. So I'm happy to put that in like that on the overlocker. So I'll take it over to the overlocker and do that. I am just going to quickly baste in that little bit that I obviously didn't quite catch. So let's sort that out. Right. I'm going to do it with the neck band facing up and start overlocking. And I'm not going to trim off any seam allowance. Sorry, you probably didn't hear that because I just pressed the overlocker pedal. I'm not going to trim off any seam allowance here because it's only a quarter of an inch. Now, when you're doing this, making sure you're always making sure that you haven't got any of the extra t-shirt fabric in the way. Right, what I like to do with my neck, uh, my overlocking tails, I'll just show you what I like to do with them. I keep them quite long as I cut them off the machine and then I get myself a darning needle and I put the threads in, onto the darning needle and then I tuck them 
I can do it on camera, of course I can't. Tuck them into where I've just stitched, although it's not working very well that way, so I might do it this way. Tuck them into here where I've just stitched. Yeah, that's working better, get it in around there. Pull it through, pull it, pull it a bit, snip, and then ta-da, the tail threads have gone in. It's not the most even ending of an overlocking, but it's not that bad. And that means it won't unravel. So yeah, I hope that's helpful. Right, so I have just given this a lovely press, and as you can see, the neckband's gone in quite nicely, I think. And then the next job I need to do is I'm going to just, just grab it. Sorry for the wobbly camera work. This is, oh, I actually cut two of these backs, and I? I only need one. Right, this is the back neck reinforcement piece. Now, I've never done this before on a T-shirt, but I'm really quite interested to see how it works because you often see this on ready-to-made T-shirts. What I need to do, first step, is to press this in one centimetre at each end on the short ends. So I'll do that, and then I will go through the next steps of how to put this back neck reinforcement along this back neckline. Okay. Right, so now we are going to do the back neck reinforcement piece. So, as I discussed before, I've pressed these ends in at one centimetre. And now we are going to pin this to the seam allowance of the neck, keeping the edge of this back neck reinforcement piece in line with the edge of our overlocking or stitching. So we're going to start it at the shoulder seam. Oh, chucking pins around. So pop my pin in there. And then I'm going to pin the other end as well. So then I can even out the rest of the back neck reinforcement piece. Pop that one in there. I think I'll go for the middle bit next. As you can see, it is pulling a little bit. So just a matter of sort of stretching it into place. I'm going to pin there hope you can see what I'm doing. As you can see, I'm lining up the edge of this with the edge of our overlocking or wherever your seam line is. Or the end of your fabric, it's your neckband. Right, let's just pin this all the way down. Stretch that out a little bit. go and then I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around here which is going to line up with the stitching where the neckband has been attached hopefully <laughs> so I'll take you over to the machine and show you how to do that now right so I'm at my machine now and now I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way down here which should hopefully line up beautifully with the stitching of the neckband so off we go So I have stitched that um, on and hopefully when I pull this down, oh look, oh I'm quite pleased with that, I thought I was going to have some showing. So you pull this down and now we're going to go to the ironing board and we're going to press this down and we're going to press this under, under like this and around our stitching. So it will end up like this. I'll take you over to the ironing board and show you what it looks like next. Right, so I am actually going to... Um, just give this area here a little bit of a grade down. So I'm going to grade down this piece here and see if that helps, because I'm noticing when I fold this over like this, it's a little bit bulky, especially here. So I'm going to try trimming that down a little bit. Oh, sorry, Mr. Iron is off again. No, Mr. Iron. So let's just trim down that bulky bit. See if this will help. doesn't actually mention to do this in the pattern but I thought it might be worth giving it a try especially on these bits here hoping that shows up um, where you've got several layers of fabric so yeah I've taken off just that little slither of fabric so now what I'm going to do I'm going to use the iron and we're going to press it away from the neckband 
Press it away. All the way around. Right, now press that down. So it still wants to curl back up. Look at that. Oh, let's just trim off those loose threads. In there. Okay, and I'm going to fold this over and under the original seam allowance. Oops, get that tucked in on there on that seam line. Right, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pin that all the way along. So I'll just win that whiz that bit up for you. Now I must mention here quickly, before I um, take this to the sewing machine, I'm actually going to quickly, oh sorry, chucking my scissors around, I'm going to quickly put a label in, in the centre back. I've got my tin of labels here, love this tin, my mum bought me this, and keep my labels in here, and I've already decided which one I'm going for, had a little bit of help from my son, I'm going to go for the koala. It says, do, can you see? I'm probably thinking about sewing, and that is totally me most of the time. So I'm going to put that in there. So I'm going to show you quickly how I do these. I use this prim, it says aqua glue marker, and it's a like a print stick almost for fabric. And what you do is put a little bit of the glue on, then you stick on your label, stick down, and then you take it to the sewing machine and hopefully it will stay where it's meant to stay because sometimes the labels like to shift around a little bit. So, oh, I've just realised I haven't pinned that very well. I'll sort that out in a minute. All right, so I'll take that pin out there. Centre back is there. Get my glue. So I put a bit of glue on there. I'm going to put a bit of glue on the top of the label too. Oh, my iron's going a bit mad. Stop stealing this iron. Right, stick the front of that label there, the back of the label, sorry, on there, stick that bit down, as you see, it sticks beautifully, but I will put a pin in there as well, just to make sure it's secure. Don't know about you, but I love using the labels in my clothes, and I actually got this label as one of the labels from the Kylie and Machine advent calendar, but I was actually really lucky. I got it in a sale from Kylie and Machine. Um, I think it was in February or March time. She had a load that she was selling off uh, a lot cheaper and it came all the way from Australia. So I love this little koala bag has come all the way from Australia. So yeah, I'll sort out that pin and I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew edge stitch all the way down here. I'm not gonna show you how to sew that. I'm just gonna do that and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Right, here it is, all sewn in. So as you can see, I have sewn in the back neck reinforcement, pi reinforcement piece and sewn it all the way along and edge stitched. Labels in. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with how that's looking. I've never done one of those before and I think it's such a nice, neat finish. Um, my stitching on the back is slightly wonky, but I figure who's gonna notice that apart from me. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So yeah, let's move on to the next step. Right, so the next part of the process is to sew up our side seams, which is detailed here. Now what they want you to do is to sew from the notch here from the hem where we folded up at the beginning of the process. And we're going to overlock all the way up, all the way up the side seam to under the arm. Um, it does say though, if you find it quite tricky to start your overlocker at the notch, to start further up, go all the way up and then go back with your sewing machine and just join that little bit up, which is this little bit here. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna start overlocking about here, overlock all the way up and then I'll come back and I'll just join up that bit with the sewing machine. So yeah, I've clipped all the way down. So I'm gonna go and overlock the sides and then I will show you what that looks like afterwards.
Right, so I've overlocked those side seams and now I'm going to do, I actually decided to start at just under the sleeve. So I started at the top and I worked my way down and as you can see here, I have stopped and I've left a little gap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join up that line here to there with my sewing machine, just because I thought it was too tricky to do on the overlocker. So yeah, I'll just do that quickly now on my machine. Right, let's join those bits up there, along there. I'm just going to trim all these loose threads because it's a bit of a muddle and a mess. And I'll tell you to take you to the next step. So the next part of the instructions is to join the short ends of the sleeve cuffs together. So I'm going to do that over the overlocker. So you put the right sides of the sleeve cuffs together and then we're going to join them along this edge here. So I'll go and do that at the overlocker. So I've sewn these over the overlocker, as you can see, and what I've done is I've just given it a little snip in the middle. I haven't gone all the way through the stitching. So I'm going to do the same on this one, just at that centre point, and don't go all the way through the stitching. Just give it a snip, so it means when we turn these cuffs inside out, we can fold one seam allowance one way and one the other way, which means we'll get a bit less bulk when they're folded over. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, now what we need to do, let me move this out of the way show you is going to fold these wrong sides together and like I said I'm going to push one seam allowance one way one the other way like so and then give those a bit of a wriggle join up those edges I must say this jersey is not the easiest to work with it is very curly quite drapey and not much fun <laughs> but at least um it will look lovely with the skirt that i'm planning it goes with it's such a lovely color and i realized it actually coordinates with the ironing board cover that was totally unintentional but it lo looks lovely with that doesn't it right so clipping that point there which is the top of the sleeve and then i'm just going to sort of bring those edges together Right, I'll do that with the other sleeve and uh, actually I might just show you how it's going to attach so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the t-shirt right sides out like so right sides out and then we're going to get one of our cuffs and we're going to put it on the sleeve so I'm going to put the seam edge down at the bottom of the sleeve going to match up those seam lines can you see there matching up those seam lines just make sure they're still lined up then we're going to clip all those three layers together i'm going to go around to the top of the sleeve oh this all looks a bit jumbly jumbly so here's the top of the sleeve and then where i clipped before was that that mark so let's clip that on there and also they must just check is that seam going towards the back yes it is i always like to check that those seam allowances aren't getting twisted now what we're going to do is just quickly clip together those three edges so the cuff and the t-shirt and that fits in there quite nicely you're not having to ease that in very much at all so i'll just carry along i'm going to clip that all the way around and then i'm going to go to the overlock and i'm going to overlock all the way around quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around and i'll come back to you and show you once i've done that on both of them sorry i hope it's not too annoying that i keep changing the camera angles it's because i'm having to flip from over to here to over to the table but yeah i've decided to have you on this side this time because i found last time i didn't have enough room for my arm <laughs> so right let's put these sleeves on so i'm going to overlock all the way around with a quarter of an inch seam allowance
right so i have sewn that the cut sleeves are on the cut, sleeve cuff sorry are on all the way around my seam allowances all didn't quite line up there which is a bit annoying i wonder what they're like on the other sleeves let's have a look uh flip it out oh that's not too bad not too bad right so our next job is here is we're going to um you're meant to press it but i'm not going to i'm just going to use my fingers you're going to top stitch the overlock seam allowance to the t-shirt rather than to the cuff so i'm going to top stitch all around making sure that, that overlock seam is all the way over and i'm going to top stitch as close as i can all the way along all the way around so i'll do that now quickly So I have stitched both of those, um, as you can see, all the way along, and I'm just gonna go and check what the instructions tell us to do next. Right, so the next part of the instructions is to fold the cuffs back in on themselves, like so, and making sure you overlap it by about a centimetre over the seam line, like so, and then we're going to press it. So I will get on and press those, and then it also says that you can do a little stitch in the ditch here, to make sure that this sleeve is going to stay in the right place so i will do that at the machine as well and then i'll show you what that looks like afterwards so i don't have to keep taking it backwards and forwards to the machine so yeah i'm going to press those sleeves like that on both sides and then stitch in the ditch along the bottom of the sleeve cuff right so i've stitched in the ditch on the sleeves so that they're attached now and i'm really pleased with how that sleeve cuff is looking that's it from the top of it and it does seem to be holding in place there it does say that you can do a couple of catch stitches under here by hand if it doesn't keep sort of flopping down but i feel at the moment that it looks pretty good so i'm going to stick with it as it is so now we need to get on to the hem and then we're nearly done <gasps> so excited it's nearly finished so the next part and the last part of the instructions is to do the hem so we are going to flip these corners that we did right at the beginning of the project inside out like they're right side out like this i'm going to do both of them ignore my loose, my loose threads there and i'm going to give them a press and then it says here you can use a twin needle to double to twin needle stitch all the way around but i think i'm going to be a bit lazy don't tell French lady patterns and I'm just going to do a single hemline because I've got the lovely Mariflex thread so it won't really matter um, that it's not a twin needle because it will um it will stretch so yeah I'm going to do a single stitch all the way around for my hem so yeah I will do that pressing and then I'll take to the sewing machine and show you the last step right so here we go let's sew the hem it does say in the instructions that you should just sew all the way around so the front and then the back but I've noticed that my hems on the inside are lining up underneath where this gap is so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to hem the front and the back separately and then maybe do a little bar tack here just to hold that flap and keep it secure um so yeah i think that's what i'm going to do instead so yeah deviating slightly from the pattern instructions there As this is so wide a hem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a line on my sewing machine here, which is where the sort of box is that opens up. I'm going to use that roughly as my guide for how far away I need to be. So I have finished the Asterti and here she is. I'm really pleased. Let me move my hair out of the way so you can see properly. So I'm really, really pleased with how it's come out. I'm going to put in some pictures and a little bit of a video of me sort of turning around so you can see it from all angles. But I'm really pleased with it. I really like the neckline. I think that the neckband went in really well and I like that shape. I think it's lovely. Um, I'm really pleased with the cuffs. I think they look lovely. And I haven't actually done any catch stitches up here. It just seems to be holding up there quite nicely. So uh, 
I'm not going to bother doing those unless I feel it starts dropping down. But um, I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm pleased with the fit. Um, I actually made a size B, which is actually smaller than my measurements measured up as. So I am a 34 to 35 on the bust, a 30 inch waist and then a 40 inch hip. And the size B for French Navy patterns, the Estaire top, it's actually a bust of 34, a waist of 26, so that's four inches smaller than my actual waist, and then a hip of 36, which is another four inches smaller. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of ease, and I'm quite glad that I did size down. Um, so yeah, I think the fit is quite nice. I think if you wanted it to be more boxy, then do your actual size, but I, I'm glad I sized down, because I think this would have been too wide on me. Um, I think I'm quite narrow up here, so I'm really glad I went for this size. Next time, maybe if I wanted to, I could grade out. Um, I think it does fit just right on if it went past my hips I would need to possibly grade out but I'm quite happy I took I did take two inches out of the length and I think actually it sits really nicely it doesn't need to go over my hips so it's fine um so yeah and I'm really pleased and as you will have seen if you've watched my July no my July my August and September plans um this t-shirt I had in mind to go with this lovely fabric to make a plissé skirt so as you can probably tell, my next sewing project this week is going to be making up this plissé skirt. So yeah, and I really can't wait to put them together. I think they're going to look lovely together. So yeah. Right, what else do I need to say? Um, need a little catch up maybe. Uh, we had a lovely weekend. We went to the farm this weekend, which was really fun. Um, got to feed some baby goats and see lots of other lovely animals. Sebastian loves animals, honestly. He was in heaven seeing all the animals. Some donkeys and some horses and some sheep and some goats. Honestly, he was in heaven. And a very, very bumpy tractor ride. <laughs> Gave us all the giggles. So yeah, that's what we've been up to this weekend. And then I mustn't forget to mention, I can't quite believe it, but I have hit over a thousand subscribers. So thank you to each and every one of you and a massive thank you to um Tamlin as well who said the most wonderful things in her vlog last week about my channel honestly I was so touched about her words they were so kind and so thoughtful so thank you Tamlin honestly thank you very much um yeah I can't quite believe how wonderful you are <laughs> so thank you and yeah so thank you to anybody that's come over from Tamlin's channel and I think I am the luckiest person in the world to have hit a thousand subscribers I've only been doing this for I think six or seven weeks which is not very long at all and I really can't believe how quickly I've got to a thousand so I don't think I would have got there without the wonderful help from some of the lovely other vloggers that have mentioned me which includes Liz from Baker That Sews, Rowan the Yorkshire Sew Girl, Michelle with her lovely channel Sewing Bunny who I did my collaboration with and the wonderful Tamlin so thank you so much to all of you and thank you to all of you who have subscribed I am very very lucky. So I've decided I'm going to do a little giveaway. It's not going to be huge. Um, I'm not going to reveal what it is. I'm just going to send whoever the winner is a little box of goodies. Um, they will have some sewing related themes um, and it will just be a little surprise gift from me and to say thank you. So, but um, what I'm going to do is I would like you to um, let me know in the comments below if there are any people that you subscribe to that are under a thousand subscribers. So if there is anybody that you really love watching and that we could all go and get them over their 1,000 subscribers, I would really love it if we could do that for them. Now, I've got a little list of a few that I have been researching over the last couple of weeks. And these ladies, they are all currently uh, under 1,000 subscribers. And I really like it if we can try and get them over 1,000 because honestly, it's made my day to be over 1,000. So I'll run through their names. And if you could go over to their channels and go and give them a little watch and a like, and maybe subscribe to their channels that would be absolutely amazing and then if you've got any I would like you to write in the comments below that you, who you really enjoy watching um so yeah please write in the comments below who you like watching that's under a thousand subscribers and also yeah please write a comment if you've gone to watch one of these guys and subscribed so once your name's in the comment box um I'm going to take all of the names from the comments box for this video and on the 24th of September I will stop the little giveaway and I will take all of the names up until that date that have put a comment in the comment box below about channels that they like or if they've gone
gone to watch one of the ones I recommend and then I will pick a random name out of the winner and I will contact you via um, your comment and then you can hopefully DM me through Instagram if that works or we could do email. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. I will go over it again in my video next week just to update you because you've got a couple of weeks to enter this little giveaway. So right, let's go through the vloggers that I really like and I'd really like you to try and get them to a thousand subscribers too. Right, so the first one is the wonderful Natalie with her channel called The Seaside Sewist. Now, Natalie is lovely. She's got a very calm and collected and relaxed style of video. She's got some lovely videos. She's done a couple of sew-alongs and she's got some lovely fabric hauls and some plans. So yeah, please do go and check her out. She's wonderful. And you know what, Natalie is one of the first people that subscribed to my channel and gave me a little comment when I started doing this. So thank you, Natalie, and I want to pay back some love to you. Right. Sorry, I am looking down because I've got notes. I don't want to get this wrong. The next person is the lovely Elisa and she has a channel called Thread the Tales. And Elisa is lovely. She does lots of Friday sews videos. She's got some plans and she's lovely. She talks about her life and her family. Um, yeah, she's wonderful. Um, and she's got a lovely little intro as well. And she's got a lovely sort of welcoming manner and very calm and relaxed too. So yeah, go and check out Elisa with Threads or Tales. By the way, I'll link all of these channels below just so you can get to them easily. The next person is Steph and she's got a channel called Knots and Needles and she's done a few videos. She's got a lot of quite a, a few little shorts videos as well. She's done a couple of um, little tutorials. One of them that looks great is a little scrap busting coaster, um, which looks like a nice little gift. And yeah, a really good little scrap buster. And she's done hers, I think, in Christmassy fabric. So yeah, it looks really nice. And she's also done a few sewing plans and some makes videos. So yeah, go and check out Steph. She's got some lovely videos. Right, uh, the next one is Jenny and she's got her channel called one girl and her machines so she's got some lovely friday sews videos on her channel she's very lovely and chatty and she's got some great little tutorials actually on different patterns and a fabulous epic fabric haul that she had some lovely beautiful fabrics from france in so yeah go and check out jenny she's got some wonderful videos and she's super super chatty Right, and then the last person I'd like to recommend is Holly, and she has got her she has got her channel Sewing in Scottish, and Holly does lots of lovely videos. She's got some lovely fabric hauls, and she also does an unboxing when she gets her luxury Sew Haley Jane box. So if that's something that you might like, please go check her out. And yeah, she's lovely. She's got a lovely Scottish accent. I love listening to her. So yeah, right. So there you go. There my little my little list of six uh, YouTubers that could. Do do the little boost to get them to a thousand subscribers so if you please go and check those out and let me know if you check them out in the comments below and yeah I can't wait to hear other people that you guys are into um, that have got under a thousand and let's see if we can get them over a thousand as well so thank you guys so much for watching please give me a like and um, I can't wait to be back next week with something else that I can't remember but it's planned in a diary and you'll find out next week <laughs> keep well lovelies and happy sewing bye